number 9, consider the sum, n going from 2 to infinity, minus 1 to the n, over n plus natural log of n. Here we're looking at an alternating series, so the tip off is the minus 1 to the n up in top. Our a sub n is going to be equal to 1 over n plus natural log of n. But when we apply the alternating series test, we're going to need to show three things. First, a sub n is positive. We'll need a sub n is decreasing, and we'll need the limit of a sub n as n goes out to infinity is equal to zero. For my first one, well, we note n is going to be equal to two or larger, so n is itself going to be a positive number. For natural log of n, okay, if we're two or bigger, let's take a look. I have the graph of natural log of x here. Natural log of 1 is equal to 0. So you note if we get past 1, natural log is always above the x-axis. So the values of the function are always going to be positive when I get to 2 or larger. That's going to mean we have positive plus positive. Okay, under a 1, that stays positive. So our a sub n's are all positive. To see decreasing, we're going to fit our a sub n to a function and then show that that function is decreasing using the first derivative test. So we'll have f of x equal to 1 over x plus natural log x. We take the derivative. This is the quotient rule. If you know it, you also have your special quotient rule for when a 1's on top. If I have 1 over g, then the derivative is just going to be minus derivative of g divided by g squared. So what's that give me? We have our minus. I have my g squared in the bottom, and then up top I have derivative of g, which is going to be 1 plus 1 over x. Now, since x is equal to 2 or larger, this top thing is always going to be positive. In the bottom, this is always going to be positive also. And note it will never be 0 because we would need to get to 1 or lower to hit 0 somehow. So this thing here is always positive, but I have a minus sign out in front, so it's always going to be negative. So first derivative test says my function is going to be decreasing on my region. So we get a sub n decreasing. To see that the limit of a sub n goes to 0, just note we have n plus natural log n in the denominator. n is definitely going to go off to infinity as n goes to infinity. Natural log of n is also going to go off to infinity as n goes to infinity. So this thing in the bottom is growing larger without bound as n gets larger. So we're looking at something that's getting driven down to zero. So we have our three conditions, and my original series converges. All right, number 10. Try the same series, but let's get rid of the minus signs. OK, this is a good place to do an application of direct comparison test with the inequalities. I'll also show you a simpler way to do it once we get past that. OK, so I'm looking at the sum of 1 over n plus natural log of n. Now, I just mentioned if I do it by the direct comparison test, well, how's that going to work? Usually when we do this, we have to go off on the side, do your work, and then you come back and you write it like you know the answer as soon as you see it. So I'll assume I've already done the work, and then you can just unravel the solution that I give. All right, I'm going to start with natural log of n is less than n. I get that by just taking a look at their graphs. So that's something we can do. I'm going to add n to both sides. It's going to give me n plus natural log of n is less than 2n. And then I would divide both sides by 2n and by n plus natural log of n. The net effect there is just to switch the order of my terms and then put them both under 1. Also, 1 over 2n is bigger than 0. So I have my inequality here. I'll move it over to here. What do I have? Direct comparison test says, first, note our sequence in the middle, the series that goes with this is going to diverge. That's because we're looking at the sum of 1 over n. That's a p series with p equal to 1, and that's going to be a case for divergence. So if the thing in the middle diverges, then the thing on the outside has to diverge also. So that's going to say our original series diverges, direct comparison test. We can get to the answer a little bit quicker if we use the limit comparison test. So in this case, I'm going to use b sub n equal to 1 over n, and then we're going to take the limit of a sub n over b sub n. 
So that's going to give me 1 over n plus natural log of n. And then we're going to divide that by 1 over n, but that's the same as multiplying by n. So I get an n on top. We take the limit. Now note, if I put the limit of the top and the bottom, we have an infinity over an infinity. That's an indeterminate form, and we can use Lehopital's rule. Lehopital's rule says take the derivative of the top, divide by the derivative of the bottom, and then take your limit again. Derivative of the top is 1. Derivative of the bottom is 1 plus 1 over n. And when I take my limit again, the 1 over n is going to go off to 0. So we're just looking at 1 for my limit. Limit comparison test says that limit's equal to 1. Your series either both converge or both diverge together. Since the series for 1 over n diverges, our original series had to diverge also. Number 11, take the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of cosine n over n cubed. Now note this is cosine n. It's not cosine of n pi, which would just bounce back and forth between minus 1 and 1. Since I'm taking cosine of an integer, this is going to go from minus 1 to 1 and hit a lot of values in between. So I need to get that under control. The way I'll do that, we have cosine of anything is between minus 1 and 1. So let's take the absolute value of cosine. Well, since the absolute value of anything is going to be bigger than or equal to 0, I have this on this end. On the other end, the absolute value of cosine is always bounded by 1 because it's always between minus 1 and 1. So I have this on the other end. We can divide everything by n cubed. Here, n's a positive number, so cubing it keeps it positive. So that means I can push it to the inside of the absolute value if I want. So that's going to give me 0 less than or equal to cosine n over n cubed. Absolute value is strictly less than or equal to 1 over n cubed. Now I can apply direct comparison test. This thing on the outside is a p-series with p equal to 3, so it's going to converge. So that's going to mean that our sequence in the middle belongs to a series that also converges. That's not my answer, though. That's saying we have convergence of absolute value of cosine n over n cubed. Well, we have a fix for that also. We have the absolute convergence test, which says if I have a series, I take the absolute value of every term, take the series that goes with that. If that converges, then your original series converged also. So what that means is, since I have it, this converges, we could take the absolute value signs off, and now this series is also going to converge. Number 12. OK, last one. We're looking at the sum from 2 to infinity, natural log of n to the n, n to the 3 halves, natural log of n. OK, looking at this, I'm not seeing anything gel immediately, but I can clean up one little piece. Before we had natural log, of n raised to the nth power, function inside power of n. Here the n is on the inside, so I'm allowed to move that out to the front. So natural log of n to the n is going to be equal to, take the exponent and put it in front, n natural log of n. Now you notice the natural logs are going to cancel out, and then we'll have n over n to the 3 halves, which is going to simplify to 1 over n to the half. This is a p-series, so we'll look at the p-series test. Our p is equal to 1 half. We have divergence when your p is between 0 and 1 inclusive. So that means we have a divergent series here. So this guy diverges.